If you're looking to start your 3D print business, more than likely you've come across Bamboo Printers. Today, we'll be talking about three different models from Bamboo that you may be considering. Now, there are lots of other options out there, but I don't have those options here, so I can't really speak to them. If at some point I get some of those other brands, I'll be happy to bring that information to you. But for today's video, we'll limit it to the ones I have access to and have experience with. So that'll be the A1 Mini, the A1, and the X1C. Which one is the best one for you starting out depends on how much you want to spend and what you intend to print. So let's start out with what you intend to print. I do more practical models, more functional models, and typically those are done in solid colors and maybe only one or two or three colors available. So for me, the AMS is not so critical. Now, if you intend to do articulated models, dragons, or character models, then more than likely the AMS option is going to be extremely important to you. Most of those products are available in several colors, so you're going to need that AMS to switch between those colors. Now, if you do practical prints, there is a use case for the AMS. Now, you may not do multiple color prints, but the AMS has a nice feature that you can load multiple spools in your AMS, and when one runs out, it will switch over and pick up another one. That is a very nice feature. So, if you're doing a print overnight, and let's say your one slot in AMS was maybe a quarter of a spool, you wouldn't worry about running out in the middle of the night and having the job paused all the way until morning where you can come in and make the switch. In this case, it would switch over from slot one to slot two automatically and pick up that new spool of filament and continue on with the job. So one use case for the AMS, even if you're only doing single colors. So now let's talk about prices because I mean, real world, some of us don't have a thousand dollars to invest in a printer. Some of us do, and it depends on how serious and how much you want to grow and how quickly you want to grow. I know people that have multiple A1 minis and they do just fine for themselves. Their products are limited to the bed size, but most of the products they develop are also within the bed size. So when they consider new products, they also consider the limitation of their bed size and they do just fine. But if you intend to do multiple prints at once, which typically most of us starting out don't do, we do what you call print on demand. So we don't actually print the product until someone orders it. It's not until later that you start to do print for stock. When your demand gets a little high and you really can't fill orders fast enough by doing print on demand, you'll tend to do print for stock. So you'll print out some things ahead of time that way, as orders come in, you can just fill those orders and then reprint for stock. Now, the reason I mentioned print for stock versus print on demand is because then the bed size becomes relevant. If I need to print three of my items or five of my items to print for stock, then that larger bed size will be beneficial. If I'm only able to print one item at a time on a smaller bed, that's going to limit my production ability. The larger bed on the A1, the 256, or the enclosed printer, the X1C, gives you the ability to print multiples of an item at once, where the A1 Mini may limit that and only allow you to print one or two at a time. So that's something you'll have to consider for the future. You can always add more machines, and at just barely over $200, A1 Minis are cheap, and you can definitely have an army of them, but... With the A1 being 359, it's not that much more, and it gives you the ability to produce more products at one time. So something you'll have to consider. Now, one question you're probably asking yourself is, do I need an enclosed printer or do I need an open frame printer? And in my opinion, what really matters is your environment. If you're printing in your house, well, more than likely your house is a fairly consistent temperature throughout and throughout the day. In that case, open frames probably just fine. But if you're like me and I'm in a commercial space, when I leave at night, I tend to shut the heat off. 
and that means there's a big dip in temperature overnight. If you're doing an overnight print, this is going to affect cooling. Your prints will cool faster than when you're here and the temperature is higher. You may get some variance in your prints, and that's something you'll have to consider. Now, capacity is a factor. If I need to print 25 of a product in a day, buying an X1C versus for about the same money, buying four A1s definitely affects your capacity. Four A1s will produce a vast array of items and a far larger number. So that is a relevant consideration, especially if you're printing just basic materials like PLA and PETG. That enclosure really only becomes relevant when you're printing more exotic materials like ABS and ASA and some of the even more advanced materials. More than likely, you won't be using those. But if you are, then the enclosed printer is definitely a consideration. Now there is the P1S and that could be an option for you, but me personally, it's either the X1C or one of the A-series. For me, the P1S falls into like a middle ground. It's not that much cheaper to offset the A1 in my opinion, and it loses some of the benefits of the X1C. Like, it has a terrible screen, let's be honest. As far as the user experience and the interface, the A1 is far superior to the P1S. So that's just something you have to consider. Me, I send most of my jobs from the slicer and I really don't interact with the screen that much other than unloading the material. And if you have an AMS, you don't even have to do that. So is the screen that important? Maybe not, something you'll have to consider. But for me personally, it's either an A-series or all the way to the X1C. I really don't know that the P1S is a good option for me personally. So you may be saying, just cut to the chase. Tell me which one you think I should get. In my opinion, the A1. The A1 is probably the best printer to start out with for commercial purposes. Now, again, you have those environmental considerations, but in my opinion, the A1 is the best option. I'll get an A1 and then immediately switch it to a 0.6 nozzle. A 0.6 nozzle will allow you to print a little bit faster because it lays down more material. It also uses more material, and that's one thing you'll have to consider. Even though a 0.4 nozzle will print a little bit slower, it won't use quite as much material, where the 0.6 will print faster but use more. Something you'll have to consider. You can easily look at that in your slicer software. Just choose a 1.4 nozzle, a 1.6 nozzle you'll see the material usage and the time to print, and the 0.6 is always faster, and it almost always uses more material. So something you'll have to consider. Now again, I said I didn't want to get into the technical aspects, but if you need to print strong parts, typically the 0.6 nozzle will print stronger parts because those lines are thicker and heavier. But again, who knows, this is the internet. Someone might jump in the comments and tell me I'm wrong, but that's been my evaluation thus far. So to wrap this video up, if you need to produce numbers, you need to produce lots of parts eventually, and you need to do that as cheaply as possible, my opinion, the A1 is the way to go. If you have a very limited budget and you're not gonna be producing a ton of parts then the A1 Mini could be a consideration. If you're going to be printing more exotic materials like ABS and ASA, then you may consider an enclosed printer. The X1C would be a great option for that. You may consider the P1S, but me personally, I don't know. Now, I've seen many print farms with the P1S, and I get the idea behind it because it's enclosed and because of those environmental considerations. I would definitely consider it, 
But when I look at the cost, it's tough for me to say an A1 is not a good option. The other thing is that the P1S doesn't have hardened extruder gears, and that's probably something you'll want to upgrade to later. Now, neither one of them, the A1 nor the P1S, comes with a hardened nozzle. And for the most part, you won't need it if you're just doing PLA or, or PETG. But me personally, it's one of the first things I do is swap out the nozzle for a hardened nozzle. So the A1, when you get a replacement 0.6 nozzle, it is a hardened nozzle. So that's a, a good swap out in my opinion. And I would do the same thing with the P1S. I would go ahead and swap out that nozzle immediately for a hard nozzle and probably consider down the road upgrading those extruder gears to the hardened gears just for longevity. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, by all means, jump down in the comments and ask me and I'll tell you anything I know. And if I don't know, I'll just make up something. If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Just jump down there, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you get a notification when I upload a new video. And if at some point I do get some additional printers from other brands, I'll definitely weigh in on those printers versus these bamboo printers and maybe versus other models within other lines. But again, this video, the scope of it was just bamboo because that's what I have. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you have a great day.